Hello everyone, Reefer Gill here. It's been a couple of days since I've been back from being away from the system for about three weeks. While I was gone, my local fish store owner came every fourth day or so to check on the equipment in the tank, to check the Eheim automated fish feeder, and to top off the auto top off water. When I returned, I found that I had a cyano outbreak in the sand bed and on top of the rocks. Some of the cyano has covered some of my SPS corals. I also have a torch coral that did not make it while I was gone. Another torch coral that's looking pretty sad in the sand bed right now. And a frog spawn that's not looking too health healthy in the sand bed as well. My rose bubble tip anemone over on the right, upper right of the tank uh, split. That's one piece here. The other piece is behind the rocks. The clownfish are hosting both at the same time. Um, that's not something I wanted. I do not want two anemones in the tank. So um, that's something I have to deal with later. They both have planted themselves and set their foots down on the rocks pretty good. So um, we'll see what happens with that. Prior to leaving on my vacation, in hindsight, I shouldn't have done this, but I did make a couple of small changes to the tank. And I believe some of those changes contributed to the outbreak of the cyanobacteria. My plan to deal with the cyanobacteria is to use a ChemiClean product to dose the tank and hopefully get rid of the cyano. Also, I'll be correcting the issues that initially caused the cyano outbreak, in my opinion. So this video is going to concentrate on the cyano itself, what it is, what causes it, and what I'm going to do to deal with it and eradicate it. It's going to be a series of videos, so this one video is going to encompass maybe you know seven days worth of video to show you the progress as we move forward, uh, or the lack of progress as we move forward. Why don't we go ahead and take a closer look at the cyano and the some of the corals that are in the sand bed and show you what that looks like. And in the sand bed you can see the cyano. The cyano is a uh, red and it mats to the sand bed, it mats to the rocks above. Cyano right here in the sand as well. In the back corner and you can see the cyano the burgundy, dark burgundy on the rocks. You can see the cyano on the SPS's. Cyano back there on that rock right there. I'm just showing you guys an uh, overview of what the cyano looks like when I initially had the outbreak so we can see the difference, hopefully the difference. Uh, at the end of the video. Okay, one of the things that I did prior to leaving that I believe contributed to the phosphate levels uh, rising, thus causing the cyanobacteria to be able to thrive on the nutrients from that phosphate, is uh, removing about 70% of the chetomorpha. Uh, the chetomorpha was growing, it started to uh, the top of it started coming up above the water line so I decided you know I'm just gonna go ahead and remove some of this stuff and I gave it to my LFS guy. Uh, you can see some of the cyanobacteria is actually on the chetomorpha, the burgundy stuff there and a little bit of cyano on the wall right there, the burgundy smears on the wall there is cyano. My skimmer has been working overtime pulling up some pretty dark gunk. Um, so yeah, there's no question about it. The phosphate levels are high in my system. Um, there's really no point in testing for it because if there was no phosphates in my system, I'd have no cyano or allergy. The allergy um, in my system is also problematic. Every morning I wake up, uh, there's uh, a considerable amount of allergy on the glass and there are some diatoms in the sand as well. So. Hopefully, with my treatment and my plan that I'm about to uh, put into effect, will eliminate both the allergy problem and the cyanobacteria problem. 
All right, so I don't think there was one specific reason why the cyano outbreak occurred in my tank. Rather, I think it was multiple reasons. Uh, one of the reasons, my system is used to having water changes once a week, 10 to 15%. While I was gone for three weeks, there were no water changes being done. Prior to leaving, I increased the lighting on my Vega color lights, specifically the red and the green lights. I went from 10% to 25%. Red spectrum lighting encourages the growth of nuisance allergy and cyanobacteria. Again, I don't think there's just one reason why the cyano occurred. I think there's a, a few reasons why it occurred. I started using an automated fish feeder. I started using it maybe a week before I left just to make sure things were in check and make sure that the door was prop in its proper position when it, it the food fell out of it. My local fish store owner said that there were times where the tank was being overfed and one of the issues I may have uh, not noticed prior to leaving is that I was using different grains or size grains of food flakes so sometimes it would get a little bit sometimes it would get a lot depending on what size grain was up next. So one of the recommendations I got, and it made a lot of sense, is if you're going to use an Eheim automated fish feeder to use the same size grain food uh, in, in that feeder so that you don't have the differences in, you know, one feeding will be a lot of food and the next feeding just a little bit. Um, I also started using uh, Aqua Vitro's uh, fuel prior to leaving and it was continued to be dosed in the tank by my local fish store owner uh, every four days or every five days. Having the cyano already being started and the nuisance allergy already starting in the tank, I think the trace elements in the fuel can also provide additional nutrients to that cyano and that uh, nuisance allergy. Uh, Clearly, I have some dead spots in the tank, especially at the bottom of the tank and over in the uh, left corner of the tank where most of the allergy is concentrated as well as on this rock here. You can see the MP40 is just above that rock and to the uh, closer to us. So whatever the MP40's flow is, it's going right over the top of that rock and not really having too much of a direct impact. So flow is another reason why I believe uh, contributed to the cyano outbreak. Okay, the very first thing I'm going to do to the system to get rid of the cyano is use this ChemiClean product. You can see the ChemiClean is a powder form and it uses this very small spoon to scoop up uh, the powder. It's one scoop per every 10 gallons. A couple things to keep in mind when dosing any kind of medication into your system is be very careful not to overdose because overdosing can obviously be harmful to our fish in the system. Chemiclean also may deplete the oxygen in our tanks so what I'm going to do to agitate the water is just add a uh, bubbler into the sump area to agitate the surface of the water and bring in some more oxygen. If I see my fish look like they're gasping for air or hanging out at the surface of the water, I'll do an immediate water change and back off the amount of chemical clean that I'm putting into uh, the system. Just like with any other dying organisms in our tank, they start to decompose. That process of decomposing will increase the nitrate levels in our tank and if they get too high, again, they will be harmful to our livestock. So it's very important that when you're using this product, it's recommended that you do uh, water changes every... Okay, so once the cyanobacteria has died off, assuming that the ChemiClean is going to do what it says it can, I'm going to change this MP40 around and I'm going to put it on the other end of the tank and then place the Corellia 1400 pump uh, where the MP40 currently is. The reason I'm doing that is because that MP40 kind of has to be above the SPS corals so that they don't get directly blasted but by doing that the water flow is kind of passing them by that's being created by that MP40 so by placing it where the Corellia is right now uh, I'll place the MP40 here and I'll be able to increase uh, its power 
and the water flow uh, will be a lot stronger towards the SPSs over here than this Corellia 1400 is doing. So that's the idea. I'll also be adding the uh, Corellia 450 right in the back of here so that I can get more water flow because I've identified that as a dead spot. I'm going to decrease the red lights from 25% back down to 10%. I'll change out the GFO and continue running the GFO uh, while the system's being dosed to re help remove additional phosphates from the system. I'll monitor their feeding. Uh, obviously the Eheim automated feeder um, has been taken offline because I'm home now and doing the manual feeding is going to provide me with a lot more control of how much food is going into the system and uh, allow me not to overfeed the system. I'll, do, I'll uh, get back on my water changes, weekly water changes, after the ChemiClean has been done. Obviously during that process, like I said, I'm going to do it every two days, but once the uh, ChemiClean process is done, I'll uh, do weekly water changes. At the end of the dosing of ChemiClean, I'll add a large bag of ROX uh, 0 0.8 carbon to help remove uh, the chemically product from the system in addition to doing uh, one major water change. So that's my plan right now. Um, like I said, I'll do this video in segments, so I'll show you the progress as we go along. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dose the system right now, and then we'll see what happens in the days to okay, come. So the system is now prepped for the introduction of the chemically. I have the air pump here with an air stone agitating the water surface to introduce uh, more oxygen into the tank. The skimmer has been cleaned and turned off and all the carbon has been removed. I placed seven scoops of ChemiClean into this uh, jug filled with tank water. You can see it floating up on top. We're just going to go ahead and disperse it. That way it's introduced into the tank, uh, dissolved into this water here. Uh, I did seven scoops. Of my tank 75 gallons plus 25 gallon sump and then you consider the rocks taking up water volume. So I did uh, seven scoops, the equivalent of 70 gallons of tank. That might be a little bit light, but I'd rather dose a little bit on the light side than heavy. Okay, I think I got most of it in there dissolved. We'll just go ahead and pour this back into the water or to the tank. Now we'll wait and see what this ChemiClean stuff does. And once the ChemiClean has done its thing, we will make the corrections necessary to prevent the cyano from coming back. So stay tuned. We will continue this with uh, additional episodes and the progress of chemically. Alright, so we are 24 hours after the first application of chemically. You can see this most of the cyano is gone off of the sand bed. There's uh, no cyano on the rocks uh, anymore and just a little bit of cyano on the tips of some of the SPS corals. A little bit of cyano in the center here below the frog spawn there which is again looking very sad um, and a little bit of the sand bit over here. Okay we're back 48 hours after the initial application of ChemiPure. The uh, tank is a little dim right now because I have the lights in acclimation mode. I lowered them about two inches just to give some corals uh, better lighting or attempt to anyways. That really had nothing to do with the cyano just letting you guys know that uh, the lights are a little bit dim for that reason. The uh, allergy problem that was on the glass, if you recall, I said that I was scrubbing the glass every morning. There was a thick allergy on it every single morning after I returned from my vacation. Uh, 48 hours after Chemi Clean was introduced, I have not scrubbed the glass one single time yet. It is almost all cleared up as far as the cyano goes. It is definitely cleared up in the problematic area over on the left hand side of the tank and on all of the rocks. The right side of the tank still has some, uh, I, 
don't know if it's cyano or not. It looks it looks like cyano by its texture because it's all matted on the sand here, but it actually might be some type of algae. Uh, the difference is that this is kind of a tan yellowish color versus the burgundy color of cyanobacteria. The sump in the refugium still has some cyano in it. The uh, Chetomorpha had cyano dusting on it. That's gone. So what I'm going to do now is do a 20% uh, water change. Earlier I said I'd do a 10 to 15% water change. However, the instructions call for a 20% water change after 48 hours of okay, using. So the tank's been dosed two times already with the ChemiClean. You can see there is no more cyano in the sand or on the rocks anywhere. Um, it's all cleared up. And it has also cleared up in the refugium area. There's no more cyano there. I've added the carbon bag into the refugium area. I'll change that out every two to three days to get the remainder of the ChemiClean out of the water. I did do about a 40% water change. The skimmer still turned off because when I try to turn it on, it skims really wet. No matter where I adjust the skimmer valve at, it's running really uh, wet. So uh, I'll just continue changing out the uh, carbon and get the remainder of that ChemiPure out of the system. Okay, the things I've done to prevent the cyano from breaking out again, I hope, is I placed the MP40 on the right side of the tank and put the Corellia on the left side of the tank. Basically swapped those two pumps out to change up the water flow in here. Um, you see the little nano pump in the back glass here. This was a problem area for the cyano. I think this is where it spawned initially because uh, this was more or less a dead spot. So now I have the pump back there pushing water out forward. Uh, the lights I removed or decreased the intensity of the red light from 25% and put it down to uh, 10%. I also have a nano pump in the back facing behind the rocks, giving flow behind the rocks and hopefully avoiding any dead spots there. I've decreased the feeding and I am uh, manually feeding these fish versus the Eheim feeder that was doing it for me while I was gone. So hopefully that will also help. That'll be it for this video. I'll keep you guys posted in any subsequent updates of the system itself. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. Thanks.